Clock in, clock in. Black got to just walk in. Yeah. He already dead. It ain't no need to check his fighters, bitch. I had somebody pull up some shit. He already dead. It ain't no need to check his fighters. Team like gotta stand up, man. Yo, after watching this whole situation, bro, I came to the realization, bro. Trust is literally one of the hardest things to do, bro. And uh, it's becoming harder and harder to trust due to the fact that the environment we living in is just so hard for everybody. So um, instead of showing people love, giving people props for doing and accomplishing the things they accomplish, folks rather hate. And it really don't matter who it is, bro. It could be your brother, your girlfriend, your cousin. That's why you got a real deal love and like people for who they actually are. You got a real deal. People all the red flags and, and, and understand, bro. Everybody ain't meant to be around you, bro. And this situation just is an eye opener for a lot of people. You feel what I'm saying? Now, looking at the BTB situation, it ended up being said that like his mama was exposing the fact that his homeboy was really the one who set him up the whole time. Not only did he set him up when bro left, he flipped the bed, he took everything from the crib from this man, bro. Now, if that is not wild, bitch, I don't know what wild is. Now, that was ridiculously crazy, dog. I ain't gonna lie to you. You feel what I'm saying? I would not even know how to think after seeing some stuff like that, and I'm actually close to these boys. But, um, I guess we finna watch this video of the story of BTB Savage. A rapper from San Antonio, Texas named BTB Savage killed someone and dissed him on social media. Then, just hours after the post, he was shot and killed in revenge. He made headlines last week for telling DJ Vlad how the shooting went down. And now, he's in the spotlight after tragically losing his own life. So today, we're breaking down exactly what happened in this wild story. Let's get right into it. On March 30th, headlines in Houston broke that a man had been shot to death in his vehicle around 6 p.m. Before anyone knew that BTB Savage was the victim, the cops had already figured out that it was a targeted shooting because of how many bullet shells they found at the scene. According to reports, Savage was in his white Mercedes in a good part of town called River Oaks, and the whip was filled with bullet holes. Two shooters pulled up and boxed him in. Then they started letting off shots. It's not clear how many times Savage was hit or if he even shot back. But by the time help arrived at the scene, it was already too late. Savage getting gunned down in the middle of a nice neighborhood like that was shocking. But then the story got even crazier. Come to find out, a few hours before he was murdered, BTB Savage posted a couple of selfies on Twitter standing in a pool of dry blood. And just a warning, the images are pretty graphic. Savage was trolling a dude who was killed in his apartment a couple of months ago. And last week, he went on Vlad TV to air out how everything happened. I really don't think it was a good idea to post that picture. Not only post that picture, he thought it was good to post that picture because he wasn't in his exact city. But obviously, he didn't know they people was kind of cool with his people. I ain't gonna count. I would have been on 10. I would have been paying attention to everything. I would have knew. Even if I didn't know, I would have been overthinking. I would have been looking at who vibe with who, who like who. In those situations, bro, you got to real deal watch everybody. And I don't think he was doing the best watching possible. A local rapper had been trying to get a feature from him for a while. They ain't really know each other, but they'd run into each other at shows and around town sometimes. One night, a couple months ago, the dude got in touch with Savage and he finally agreed to do a feature. And later that night, the other rapper pulled up to his apartment with a car full of dudes. The rapper came into Savage's apartment with a 34-year-old named Omar Richardson. Savage said he felt kind of weird because both of them was looking around the spot when they walked in. But then Richardson flashed some bread and Savage thought it was all good. The dudes came in with a box full of studio equipment so they could set up and record. But then the other rapper said he was missing a few things and Omar told him to go back to the whip and grab what he needed. Savage thought something was off, so he locked the door when the rapper went outside. And that's when everything went left. Omar started asking Savage about his jewelry and who he got his pieces from. And when Savage reached down to show his chain, Omar upped his strap and told Savage to hand everything over. At first, Savage told him he wasn't giving it up. But after Omar said he'd shoot him and his girl too, Savage started taking the chains off. When Omar first pulled out the gun, Savage was too far away to make a move. 
but when Omar reached to grab Savage's chain, he saw an opportunity and moved quick. Savage wrapped Omar up in his arms and fell to the ground and they started wrestling. Omar's gun fell out of his hand and Savage had his arms wrapped up and that's when Savage yelled for his girl to come shoot him. She came in and popped him in the back twice, but that ain't slow him down. Omar managed to get his hand on one of his guns and let three shots off at Savage's girl. But luckily, every shot missed and Savage got him back under control. He told Omar his son was in there and he just needed to leave. But instead of ducking out and getting himself to the hospital, Omar told Savage he was going to kill him and kept fighting. Omar yelled at his homies to shoot through the door and they let off two shots and missed everyone. Savage told his girl to shoot back, but then 20 more shots flew into the apartment from the front door. When they stopped shooting, Savage's girl popped back at him with two shots and that's when Omar's homies left him to die. Savage and Omar kept fighting while Savage's girl tried to get a clean shot on him. She fired again, but the bullet hit Savage right in his elbow and shattered it. His bone was poking through the skin and he couldn't even hold his arm up, but he got his body out of the way and his girl shot Omar one more time in the torso. Savage tried to get him to leave again, but Omar said he wasn't going without getting something. He was crawling on the floor with a gun in his hand right next to Savage's son's room. This dude was determined to leave with something. Like, I ain't gonna cap, this must have been his job. He must have been laid on rent. He needed this badly and he was willing to risk his life for it. The man gave you an opportunity to leave and you still ain't wanna leave? Bro, that's crazy, boy. You a little bit too hot out here, boy. You need some milk, boy. And that's when Savage jumped on him. He put his finger over Omar's and let off all the rounds left in the magazine. When Omar realized he was out of ammo, he started telling Savage he had kids too and asked him not to let him die. But Savage had no sympathy for him and said, I hope you die, Savage and his girl went in to grab his son. Then Savage went back out to make sure everything was clear before they left. Omar crawled to the front door and grabbed Savage's foot when he walked by and begged him to take him to the hospital. Savage told him, Yo, I'm about to fry right here, and if they come save you, then they come save you. If not, then yo, I toast you. After that, Savage called his homie and was rushed to the hospital. He passed out in the car, and when he woke up in the hospital bed, the cops were waiting there to talk with him. After Savage and his girl explained the situation, the cops classified it as self-defense, and neither of them were charged. Omar died at the scene, and Savage told the cops he was happy about it. In his interview with Vlad, he admitted, That shit gave me bad PTSD for sure. Like, But Omar put his son's life in danger, so Savage had no choice. It was a crazy situation, and the Vlad TV interview immediately blew up, hitting almost 2 million views in less than a week. And Savage's ops obviously wasn't happy about it. Vlad asked Savage, I paid attention to that Vlad in interview, bro. Y'all want to know something that I peeped that was crazy? Like, the interview, when Vlad first dropped it, it was doing all right. It, it wasn't going crazy. I ain't going to cap. I think it was like at like 300,000 views or something like that. After BTB Savage passed away, the numbers went up. I'm talking about every 30 minutes, it up like another 600,000. I'm talking about the next 24 to 48 hours, it was already at 2 million. Like, it started going up after he passed, and the, the video was already out a couple of days before that. Savage, I mean, are you at all concerned that his people are going to try to come back? Yeah, they for sure might do it. They might do what they do. But I'm going to get active. That's all it is. They might do what they do. But they did what they did, and you didn't get active. I mean, I understand the situation, though, but damn. Fortunately, it ain't take long for the get back. And some people are blaming the interview for his tragic death. Benzino's been on Vlad TV before. But after the news broke about Savage's death, he tweeted, I ain't never going on that shit again. The culture is already killing each other at such a high rate that we don't need instigators by an outsider. Plus, Savage's ops clowned him over the interview after he died, which led to more people blaming Vlad. Even though the interview put the situation in the spotlight, at the end of the day, Savage already had real beef in the streets with whoever killed him. And that beef still would have existed even if he never told Vlad about Omar's death. Savage had already moved out of the apartment where Omar died. I ain't gonna lie, a lot of people want to blame Vlad. I don't blame Vlad at all whatsoever. I blame everybody who has the nerve to go on there and talk about what you going through. You go on the people platform talking about what you going through in the streets and then people from the streets get mad at your interview. It's not the interviewer's fault. He doing what he supposed to do. He supposed to ask you questions. It's up to you on how you finna answer the question. He chose to answer the way he answered and 
people felt the way they felt. I hate how people is blaming somebody for asking questions. I mean, it's a lot of good that come bad with how you answer the question. You answer the question the way you do that. Yeah, it's gonna come with a little clout. But the bad part about it is gonna come with a lot of ops too. So it's up to you on how you want to answer the question. And he chose to answer it that way. Vlad didn't make him do it. But he went back just to take a picture in his blood and flex on his ops. Him and his girl had every right to defend themselves. That night, Omar tried to rob him. But dissing people's dead homies on the internet like that will always put a bigger target on your back. It's just an all around tragedy. And the rap game has lost another talented artist too soon. BTB Savage never hit the mainstream, but he was working hard the last few years and definitely could have made a name for himself in the industry especially with the extra exposure from his Vlad TV interview. Savage ain't come up like most rappers. He actually joined the army and was stationed in South Korea. And that's where he went to a trade school and learned how to code. According to reports, he got caught up in a massive fraud scheme that was allegedly over a million dollars. And that's when he got kicked out of Korea and decided to hop in the booth. He tragically left behind a four-year-old son who will have to grow up without his dad around. And Savage said that his son was the only- So that's how you got your motion. Boy, you was in the military and you ended up hitting for them rats on a computer. And they kicked you out. That's crazy. See, that's wild. That's how you know when somebody is not actually from the streets. Like, it's not a good thing to be from the streets now for people who think, oh, I want to be in the street. I got to be in the street. It's not a good thing. Now, if you had no choice, that's a different story. But people who not from the streets, Streets that act streets don't have the natural street instincts. And that's what BTB Savage ain't have in this situation. Cause your natural street instincts would not have let you let them folks in your house first quarter. I'm talking about multiple people and uh, whatever you was doing, either if you was recording for real or, or serving that pack, you was moving kind of crazy, bro. Soon folks was acting funny. Yeah, it's about that time to go. Y'all boys slide. Oh, hold up, I left the pack at the other crib. Oh, hold up, we go record at the other crib. Y'all gotta go. You feel what I'm saying? Yeah, your buddies left outside. Oh yeah, y'all forgot something in the car. Oh, y'all just ruined the whole play. Okay, slide outside real quick. Hold up, it's something right there at the door. Boom, slam the door on his stupid ass. You feel what I'm saying? Like, it's a lot of ways you can beat certain situations. Soon you moving funny, I don't even wanna make this play no more. Yo dumb ass should've came inside the house with everything you need to come inside with, cause we ain't doing no going back to the car no nothing that's dead. You feel what I'm saying? But hey. It kept him going. BTB Savage was hustling hard to make it in the industry and provide for his family. But the streets caught up to him before he could hit the mainstream. Rest in peace, the BTB Savage. As much as that situation is so unfortunate, bruh, even if you do something in self-defense, bruh, you speak on somebody who passed, brag on it, be prepared, bro. Just be prepared, fam. Um, yeah, it's just a wild situation, y'all.